Welcome back everybody to another Motobob video and today Indian announced a major update to one of their most popular lineups, the Scout. So here we go with the nine key things that you need to know about it. Now perhaps the biggest change for this new lineup is the fact that they're now offering five distinct models and variations and some of them are the same as the previous generation so you've still got a Scout Bobber and it still comes with the chunky 16 inch wheels, a solo seat, the bar and mirror lowered two inch suspension and the bobbed mug guards and you've also got a sports scout which basically replaces the scout rogue and so that one gets the same 19 inch front wheel the mini fairing some six inch handlebar risers slightly taller three inch suspension for better ground clearance and a sports seat for holding you in place for quicker riding and then there's the scout classic which you could say is equivalent to the previous gen scout and this is a slightly more relaxed bike with with chilled out ergonomics, the classic style paint job, the spoke wheels and plenty of chrome. But look, one of the new additions is this Super Scout which they say is basically a lightweight tourer and so as such this one comes with a windscreen, touring bags, a two up seat, spoke wheels as well and the classic styling and also it's fully decked out with their top level tech package which we'll get onto later in this video. But the one that's realistically going to catch most people's eye is the top of the lineup which is this completely new 101 Scout. Now this one is much more performance biased and sort of makes me think of Scout meets FTR and so you've got an upside down fork that's fully adjustable, piggyback shocks at the rear, twin front brakes with four piston radially mounted Brembo calipers, six inch risers, the half fairing, some dedicated badging and paint, as well as that fully spec tech package. Now personally I think it's quite impressive to see just how much variety they've managed to achieve when it's all based upon pretty much the same platform, yet with five fairly different interpretations of the bike that should mean there's something that suits a broad Broad range of tastes. Now I should add that the more sporty bikes in the lineup, so the 101 Scout and the Sport Scout, both roll on Metzler's Cruise Tech tires and so I'd love to take this opportunity to give a huge shout out to Metzler for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. Whether it's the Cruise Techs for your cruiser, Race Techs or Sport Techs for the road and track, the Road Techs as a brilliant all-round sports touring tire, or the Torrance and Carouse for adventure riding, Metzler pretty much have something for all riding styles and in my experience they're always top draw tyres. We've been out testing plenty of bikes on Metzler's this year like the new Triumph Scrambler 1200s and the 400X and also the new Africa Twin and genuinely in my experience they've always been great performers which is a huge confidence booster when you're out on the bike. So look if you're thinking about fitting your bike out with some new tyres for the new riding season then do check out the link down in the description below where you'll find Metzler's full lineup. And once again, a huge thanks to Metzler for their support. Now, one absence from the lineup that some of the more eagle eyed viewers might have spotted is the 60 version of the Scouts, which refers to the 60 cubic inch version of the engine that's significantly smaller than the standard bike. These reduced power variants are a bit more subdued. I guess they're restrictable down to A2 compatibility as well, and also they cost a bit less. So they were a great option if you're looking for something a bit more affordable and you don't really care about maximum performance. But look, while there's nothing in this new 2025 lineup at the moment, Indian did say on the press call that they would follow at a later date. So perhaps it's worth holding out for one of those if it sounds a bit more like suited to your needs. If on the other hand performance is of concern to you, then you'll be very happy to know that these new scouts all use an updated 1250 V-Twin that they're calling the Speed Plus. Now that's 10% up in capacity from the 1133cc V-Twin that was in the previous gen scouts. And as a result, you get about five more horsepower at the top, so it's now 105 peak, and that rises to 111 horsepower, specifically on the 101 Scout. Peak torque has also seen a fairly significant boost, so it's 82 foot-pounds now peak, or 111 newton meters, so that's 10 foot-pounds up, or 13 and a half newton meters. And so combined with a little bit of weight loss as well across the lineup, I am expecting these bikes to feel quite a bit more punchy. Now on top of that, Indian claim that they've also 
also done some work to improve the sound of this engine, whilst also fitting a slip assist clutch which means there's a much lighter feel at the lever as well as preventing rear wheel lockups under aggressive downshifts. Now from a practical perspective they've also added a sight glass as well as make it much easier to remove the valve covers and so servicing all round should be easier. And then last up on the engine they've also changed the appearance quite a lot with these completely different looking covers and it has to be said it looks a bit more clean and modern. In fact the whole bike's kind of interesting because there's so much changed and yet the end result is fairly similar. You know put the bobbers side by side for example and you can see that it's slightly evolved and tweaked but fundamentally it's a very similar bike and yet they've basically re-engineered the whole thing from the ground up with that completely new engine and also this completely new frame. So instead of the aluminium of the previous generation which they said some customizers found it difficult to work with, they've now gone for a tubular steel design which also looks a little bit more sleek I'd say and it's tucked away under the tank for a bit less of a dominating look. Now look, you might think that's going to make the bike heavier moving from aluminium to steel, but actually they're saying bikes are around 10 pounds lighter, and so I was comparing the specs of the Bobbers like for like, and it does indeed come in around 5 kilograms less, so 237 kilograms as shipped. Now personally, I think it's really interesting that they've effectively tried to build the bike so it's easier to customise and cut it up and stuff like that, especially at a time where it feels like that's less and less the case, and a lot of manufacturers seem to be making it more difficult to work on your bike so that you have to take it to their dealers to be serviced. And so on this one, it's got to be said, hats off to Indian. Now these bikes are super low in terms of the ergonomics, so the bobber is the lowest with that reduced travel suspension and the seat height comes in at 649 millimeters, whereas the rest of the lineup, well they are a little taller by five millimeters, but still generally super low at 654. Honestly, for a lot of people coming from naked bikes and stuff like that, it's gonna feel really very low, but it does give you a lot of that cruiser feel, and it does also make it very easy to get your feet down and make them feel very manageable. New for this model though, there are mid controls available, which I think is gonna make it more appealing to those who don't necessarily come from a cruiser background or don't enjoy having their feet super stretched out. And they're actually saying, with all the different seats and foot pegs and floorboards and risers and handlebars available, there are now more than 30 ergonomic combinations for this group of bikes, which has to be said is great news, I think, for the customer. You know, sometimes you do like the look of a certain bike, but you just can't quite get on with the way it feels when you're out riding it. And so I'd say it's great to be able to get those contact points absolutely dialed into your personal dimensions. Now, having ridden the Indian Scout in very various configurations in the past. I have to say, one of my favourite things about it was that it was a modern day bike, quite quick and punchy, but also it still felt fairly basic and stripped back and raw. And so coming into this update, I was preparing myself to be a bit disappointed because naturally, being a brand new updated version, they were always going to add loads more tech and goodies to this bike. But look, I think they've absolutely nailed this one because they're now offering three different tiers at three different price points so you can suit the tech package and level of intervention that best suits your tastes and needs. So the entry point is the standard version which is still very basic with just ABS in terms of rider aids, although it does come with LED lighting all round and a fuel gauge. Next up you've got the limited level of trim that brings in some riding modes, traction control, a USB charging point and the all important cruise control which I think if you're doing any sort of decent distance on these bikes will be a welcome addition. And then top of the range is the limited plus tech package which gets their round TFT display that you'll see on a lot of their other bikes like the Chiefs or the FTRs. This opens up navigation through their ride command system, the ability to control calls and media through your phone as well as some neat visuals for displaying the key information about the bike. Now the three most affordable Scout models, so the Bobber, the Sport Scout and the Classic are all available with any of those trim levels, whereas the more premium models, so the Super Scout and the 101, are only available in the top limited plus tech package. So naturally, those ones are significantly higher in terms of their starting price, but I still think it's excellent that the other three bikes are available with that level of flexibility, and it really does feel like they've put personalization and personal taste 
right at the forefront of this update. Onto the stallion, and while the bike does have a lot of the same overall shape, again, pretty much everything is new. So that new engine looks significantly different. And of course, the new steel frame adds a bit of a different look as well. But also, all the bodywork, so the mud guards and tank, the seats, the side panels, the exhaust system, the tank console, the bar risers, all of it is new. And I think, personally, it looks absolutely fantastic. The Scout Bobber, in particular, has always been one of those bikes I'd absolutely love to own because it just looks so cool. And I really like what they've done here with the styling. It feels like a slight tweak that just neatens it up a bit and modernizes it, but it still retains that sort of menacing stance. And look, this might feel like a bit of a detail, but probably for me, the biggest visual improvement has to be the new smaller radiator with the previous generation having something that was a little bit on the large side and it did sort of um, really stick out when it came to the looks on the sort of front three quarter. And also with that aluminium frame that really was quite chunky, that didn't help either. But this new radiator, they say is 22% smaller and also, you know, the frame looks quite a bit slimmer around it. And I think especially for those more traditional looking versions of the Scout, so the Classic and the Super Scout, it does a lot less to compromise that old school aesthetic. Then again on the theme of getting the bike dialed into your personal taste, of course they've got a pretty huge accessories catalogue with over a hundred items to choose from and some of them fall into a choice of four accessory collections which help to spec the bike up for specific applications. So the Overnighter for example adds a solo luggage rack, an all-weather tail bag, a quick release touring windscreen and floorboards amongst other things. The commuter gets you the adapter headlight, the phone mount, mid foot controls and passenger pegs. The stealth collection focuses on blacking out the bike with some fancy handlebar risers, resume and mirrors, smoked indicators and more. And then the open roads collection gets you the highway bars, LED driving lights, passenger backrest, floorboards for both the rider and passenger, highway pegs and all that sort of good stuff for long distance rides. Now the price is a bit of an interesting one because in the US a lot of these models have gone up by a few hundred dollars, and so it might not look like a particularly bargainous deal. Although you have to admit there are quite a few significant enhancements, and so you could argue these new bikes are probably worth the extra cash. In the UK though, the Scout has always looked a little bit expensive, and so maybe that's made it a bit difficult to recommend against some of the competition, like the Triumph Bobber or the new BMW R12, which comes in under 12 grand. But it looks like the Scout Bobber is actually down by about 500 quid now, and also, the Super Scout is down by about 600 versus the Scout Rogue that it replaces. Now, it's not all good news. Stuff like the Classic, that's 400 quid up on the regular Scout. But I think overall, that's a pretty good deal for UK punters for once. So definitely some nice improvements with more power, less weight, lots more flexibility, some nice different models to choose from, and also a bit less money depending on which one you choose. And so look, I'd love to know what you think of this update down in the comments below, as well as which of the five really tickles your fancy. Also, if you want to see my review of the Scout Rogue that the Sports Scout replaces, then I'll put it on the screen now so you can give it a click and give it a watch in case you haven't already. Also, hit subscribe if you want to see more of the latest motorcycle news like this right here on YouTube. Many thanks for watching today, and we'll see you in the next video.